Hearing Kukui calling Ash's Oni-chan is so goddamn adorable. Pokemon Ranger, I choose you! What's up, mighty boys and girls, it's the Ranger Boy here, and <gasps> welcome to another review of the Pokemon Sun and Moon anime. Finally, finally, the long has come back! Home. And by home, I mean YouTube and my subscribers, of course. But unlike me, Ash will travel far away from home, while at the same time, not really. With episode 125, Ash encounter Beyond Time. And you know what that means. Time travel episode? And if you want to know how exactly this episode turned out to be, then you can either jump into a time machine and watch the episode, even though you don't really need a time machine to do so, or you can grab some popcorn, grab some cookies, and travel alongside with me. Also, I will add the funny faces that I have forgotten from the Melton episode, and from that episode before the Ryuki Jim battle. Anyway, how do we even start this week's episode? Well, how about with Celebi cruising around Alola like it has no business there. Even though Burnett later on explained that Celebi was attracted by the nature power of Alola. Yeah sure, why not. Anyway, since we are close to the Alola League, we see some intense training by Ash and his Pokemon. Maybe Rowlet did it a little bit too intense. But especially, the clash between Lycanroc and Toracat was so intense that Celebi got surprised, causing a rift in time, so that only Ash and Toracat were traveling back in time to Alola of um long time ago? I don't really know how many years that is, and not even Cuckoo's flashback of him as a 5 year old kid didn't really help. By the way, still obsessed with Pokemon Woos, a younger version of Hala, and still no shirt, Cuckoo's eternal rival is indeed shirts. Speaking of rival, after arriving in the past, Toracat seems to sense danger in form of a cute adorable litten, but at the same time, he could feel the aura of his eternal rival Incineroar. I can totally understand you man, I also hate Incineroar in Smash Ultimate, especially his downward B move, which have cost me so many many matches, god damn it! Right after that, young Cuckoo arrives, not only calling Ash Onichan, oh, but also fanboying like Cray Cray over Ash having a Z ring. He quickly demands his Onichan to perform dynamic full flame, and I just love this moment of Ash remembering all the movements of Kiawe, including all the speeches he does during all that, only to basically say fuck that shit and performs it perfectly without those long ass speeches of Kiawe. Totally impressed by Ash's performance, Cuckoo now calls him the Move King or King of Moves, and now he challenges Ash to a battle, and even demands Ash to not hold back, which he didn't, and therefore defeats Kukui without even a scratch. While Gao, aka Ash's nickname for young Kukui, is on the verge of tears, Ash teaches him that you can learn from failures and just to try it next time. Kinda weird having such a mature advice from a guy who's basically just 5 years older than Kukui's past version. Anyway, all the forest Pokemon and even the forest grandpa, Totem Trevenant, have watched over their battle, and soon Ash is bonding with all those Pokemon. Quickly, after Ray is pouring down on them, Ash exchanges his past experience with young Kukui in regards of battling gym leaders and even the Pokemon League, followed up by my absolute favorite moment of this episode. Kukui is like, what happens if you win the Pokemon League? And then there's this pause, this really awkward pause of Ash saying nothing. It's just a two second pause and the original purpose of this scene was to display that Ash was thinking about his most desired dream of being a Pokemon master, but am I really the only one who at that moment thought that Ash's thought process would be like, oh shit, I never really won the League. Uh, I guess I'll tell him all about the whole Pokemon Master thing. Maybe I really am the only one, but in a sad reality kind of way, it made me laugh. <laughs> God damn it, Ash. God damn it. Oh man, let's sum up the rest of the episode. Trevenant feels something itchy in his head, which turns out to be wild cutie flies who couldn't fly thanks to the rain. Ash and Kukui dried their wings up, and as a result of this display of courage, Ash gets the Fire MZ crystal. Uh, let's talk about that later. Celebi takes Ash back to his original timeline, reunites with his Pokemon, while Ash also looks at the deceased tree, which sadly seems to be the wild Trevenant, arrives at home, and that's the end of the episode. So yeah, that's it. And without any more hesitation, let's make a quick time skip to the ratings. What can I say about this story? It's a pretty decent one, but at the same time, I couldn't really help but to think that they actually used many elements from the Celebi movie, first and foremost young Kukui having a very similar role to young Professor Oak. With that being said, I just loved the overall interaction between Ash and Kukui, with Ash this time being the mentor, especially since normally it's the other way around. I really liked how mature Ash came off in this episode, since especially in Sun and Moon, he kinda has the reputation of acting way too childish, and I'm glad that the writers haven't forgotten 
that Ash can also be mature. Their conversation in regards of gym battles and the Pokemon League was also great to see, since this is basically the origins of Kukui's idea of forming the Pokemon League in Alola. Even with the little awkward pause of Ash in regards of winning the league made me laugh for all the wrong reasons. With that being said, I have to point out my issue of Ash receiving the Fire Z Crystal. On the one hand, I really liked that Ash performed Dynamic Full Flame perfectly, since he witnesses that move from Kiawa all the time, so it made perfect sense that he could do that as well. But him receiving the Z Crystal? I'll be honest, I don't like that at all. First, he received it not because of a really intense challenge, but more so because of a chore. Even Marlowe's and Sophocles island trial was more challenging than that. And secondly, does Ash really need another Z-Crystal? He now has one Z-Crystal for each member of his Pokemon, plus the Normalium Z-Crystal. He already had enough, and in my opinion, giving him the Fire Room Z-Crystal is just an attempt to let us believe that Ash might be able to win the league, even even though we all know that this is not the case. Also, it kinda makes Kiawa less special now, since he now is not the only member who has the Fire Room Z. And remember, he identifies himself with that thing. All his passion, his past with his grandpa, and his future ambitions lies in that crystal. And Ash just gets it like that, because he cleaned up a totem Pokemon. I mean, come on. But all in all, it was a pretty okay episode, so I will give it a 7 out of 10. What can I say about the focus? Thanks to the title, Ash Encounter Beyond Time, we knew that there will be time traveling involved in this episode. And since Sun and Moon is known for its world building, I was expecting to discover some areas and past people. But that wasn't really the case. The main focus was, of course, Ash encountering Kukui, but since he travels back in time, I was kinda waiting for Ash to also meet other people and other places. But sadly, Ash only met Kukui, and also was only restricted to the forest area. Compare that to the Parallel Universe episode with Daya. We haven't only seen Daya, but also this deformed environment of Alola, like for example the Pokemon School, which totally changed the overall vibe of the episode. So yeah, I was kinda disappointed about that aspect, so I will give the focus a 7 out of 10. Last but not least animation, the main highlight of course being Ash performing Dynamic Full Flame for the very first time, and it looked really cool. But since it's a Z-move, it will get old very fast. But besides that, there wasn't really that much else. We had some great animation during the Toracat slash Lycanroc training session and even during the short battle against Litten. But that's the problem. Those moments were so short that you barely remember anything from it and therefore you can't really appreciate those moments like you should. So sadly I have to cut off some major points which leads to a 5 out of 10. So this episode scores a 6.33 out of 10 and even though this episode is kinda underwhelming compared to the episodes of the past few weeks, I still would recommend it. Just relax and enjoy. Anyway guys, I really hope you enjoyed this review and just like always, I see you guys in the comments down below. Bye guys!